Vivian from Love Zebras and Ehlers Danlos Syndrome on Facebook. And guess what today is? Today is Reds for Veds Day or Vascular Ehlers Danlos Syndrome. So I made an awesome little sign, which you can do too. And if you wouldn't mind, please, please, please post a picture on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, anywhere and tag hashtag reds for beds and if you want tag me Cheyenne Love or Love Zebras and Ellers Stanless Syndrome so that I can see them and share them when I get them. I'm so excited. I don't own much red so I thought that I would wear my bright red wig <laughs> which is for my Black Widow cosplay. Um yeah so just a real quick little intro vascular type or VEDS is vascular Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and I personally have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome type 3 and type 4. That means I have the hypermobility type and I have a crossover of the vascular type of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. I have not had the genetic testing yet but the geneticists I have seen said that I had enough of the clinical symptoms and family history that they felt comfortable diagnosing me with type 3, type 4, and not messing with the insurance and all that stuff because they don't like clearing genetic testing, even though it's important for people. But anyway, so just so a little background, I have type 3 and type 4, which is vascular type. And I went on the Ehlers-Danlos Society's website to get information on vascular type. I wanted to read it to you from them because they know their stuff and I didn't want to get it confused. And so here we go. I have it printed out. I have a little bit of a hard time reading so if I stutter or mess up and have to like start over a little bit just bear with me. Okay, vascular type. Vascular type is generally regarded as the most serious form of EDS due to the possibility of arterial or organ rupture. The skin is usually thin and translucent with veins being seen through the skin, which is most apparent over the chest and abdomen. There are certain facial characteristics present in some affected individuals. These manifestations include large eyes, a thin nose, lobeless ears, an underdeveloped chin, short stature, and thin scalp hair, which you can't tell with my wig on, but whatever. Also evident is a decrease in subcutaneous tissue, particularly in the face and extremities. Minor trauma can lead to extensive bruising. Arterial, intestinal, uterine fragility or rupture commonly arise in this type of EDS. Spontaneous arterial rupture has a peak incidence in the third or fourth decade of life, but may occur earlier. Oops, sorry, this is a car. Um, Mid-sized arteries are commonly involved. Arterial rupture is the most common cause of sudden death. Acute diffuse or localized abdominal or flank pain is a common presentation of arterial or intestinal rupture. Life expectancy is shortened with a majority of individuals living only into their 40s. Pregnancies may be complicated by intrapartum uterine rupture and pre and postpartum arterial ble bleeding. Treatments are available which may help extend life and surgical interventions are improving. Joint hypermobility is usually limited to the digits. Tendons and muscular rupture can occur. Club foot is frequently seen at birth. Other manifestations that may be found in the vascular type include Acrogeria, premature aging of the skin of the hands and feet, early onset varicose veins, arteriovenous fistula or an opening between an artery and a vein, carotid cavernous fistula, pneumonia, men, pneumonia thorax, collapse of a lung, pneumonohemothorax, Collapse of a lung with collection of air and gas and blood. Gingival recession and complications during and after surgery. AKA your wounds not healing. 
and the vascular type of EDS is caused by structural defects in the Pro A1-3 chain of collagen type 3. This type of EDS is inherited in an autosomal dominant manner. A skin biopsy can do diagnose this type of EDS and you can go to www.ellers-danlos.com and that takes you to the Ellers Danlos Society's page and they are doing a ton of work to try and get more information out in the world about Ehlers Danlos Syndrome so that we have more doctors involved, more research clinics involved, more trials involved, more awareness involved, and just overall better care for those of us with EDS because right now, there's really not much they can do for us other than put band-aids on the things that happen. They can just try and patch us up the best they can do with whatever symptoms are occurring at the moment and whatever surgeries are needed and whatever bracing is needed and wheelchairs and hospital stays and home health nurses and things like that. And yeah, there is absolutely no cure for Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome right now for any of the types they just they don't have a cure right now and there's not even really good treatment options like I said they literally just try and patch us together with band-aids to get us through life and if we could spread more awareness that would get more people involved knowing about Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome we wouldn't have to wait years and years for a diagnosis I got diagnosed at 19 years old and I have shown symptoms of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome since birth. I was born with a dislocated hip and a way too big head. And I ended up in the hospital a couple of times for like random fevers. And I was always covered in bruises everywhere. And I was always having dislocations all the time. I started physical therapy when I was three because my shoulder wouldn't stay in place. And I would get cuts all over the place and it would take them an eternity to heal. I would have surgery and my incision would just like open back up or my scars would spread out and get bigger than they started out as and my skin is really thin and stretchy and fragile so the littlest bump or nick can cause a pretty good sized wound on me and it took 19 years for them to figure this out and that's just not okay because in those 19 years with them not figuring out what we have, we could die and we wouldn't even know what was going on with us and that's not okay. And it really sucks because in the last two days, I've had to post statuses on my EDS page about EDSers that have passed away and they weren't even 50 yet. They were so young and they had so much to live for and they left family members behind that are also diagnosed with EDS. So what chance do they have right now? And what chance do I have right now? We really need help because EDS and especially vascular type is very life limiting and it's life threatening. And it's just, it's scary. And it's really hard knowing that the doctors don't know how to fix you either and you're just going through this crazy world of EDS blind and doing the absolute best you can you do everything the doctors tell you to do and you just you don't get better and you're still constantly at risk you always have things like your medical alert bands on and you have it on your phone and you have little um, cards in your wallet and a folder of all your information so that every time you see a new doctor you can be like this is what I have have you heard of it and nine times out of ten they have never heard of it before so please 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 help me spread awareness for vascular Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome you can share my pictures that I've posted you can go to the Ehlers-Danlos Society's website share this video like and comment do anything you can to help us spread awareness because you could potentially be helping save our lives by having more people know what we have and how to treat it. And don't forget to use the hashtag Reds for Beds. And I love you guys so much. If you have any questions or anything, just put them down in the comments and I'll do the best I can to answer. 
and I hope you all are having a very happy Reds for Beds Day, and I love you guys so much. Bye! <laughs>